Hello friends, you are watching. This is awesome videos and today we are going to solve some past year JWE problems. Okay, so today also we are going to solve some AEEE problems. See, I am going to tell you this thing one more time that the level of AEEE and JWE mains is almost equal. So solving the problems of AEEE will help you a lot. Let's see the first one. If the difference between the roots of equation x square plus ax plus 1 is equal to 0 is less than root 5. That means the difference of the roots is less than root 5. Then the set of possible values of a. Now this is the question of roots of equation. We solve the formulas. We know all the things. Just we have to apply a basic thing here. Now they say the value of the difference between the roots is less than root 5 now let's suppose that alpha and beta are the roots of this equation this particular equation x square plus ax is equal to 1 is equal to 0 x square plus ax plus 1 is equal to 0 the alpha and beta are the roots then the difference is alpha minus beta and they say that alpha minus beta is less than root 5 okay now we know that now how to find alpha minus beta alpha minus beta is equals to alpha plus beta whole square minus alpha into uh, minus two alpha into beta we all know that this is a basic formula so just apply this that alpha minus beta is equal to square root of alpha plus beta whole square minus alpha beta how we derive this because alpha minus beta whole square is equal to alpha square plus beta square minus two alpha beta so i just adjusting the middle term and why we are doing this because we know already know the value of alpha plus beta and alpha minus beta so alpha plus beta is that means the summation of the roots and summation of the roots that formula is minus b by a that means minus a by 1 so it's minus a alpha plus beta is equal to minus a yeah and alpha minus beta is equal to c by a that means 1 by 1 so it's 1 alpha into beta is 1 okay we know that now mode of alpha minus beta is equal to that means difference difference between alpha minus beta is equal to square root of alpha plus beta whole square minus alpha beta alpha plus beta that is minus a minus a is a square is a square uh, minus 4 uh, uh, sorry minus 4 into alpha beta alpha beta is 1 so it's minus 4 so we have the difference difference is minus a square root of a square 4 okay now just put it here because they say that alpha minus beta is less than root 5 that means square root of a square minus 4 less than square root of 5 now squaring both the side that means a square minus 4 is less than 5 that means a square less than minus 9 less than 0 that means a square less than 9 that means a square less than 9 that is equals to the a sorry let's say mod a less than 3 a square less than 9 that equals to mod a less than 3 and mod a less than 3 that means minus 3 less than a less than 3 so the value of a is lie between the minus 3 and 3 that is my answer minus 3 to 3 it belongs to minus 3 to 3 okay so this is my answer answer option number 1 minus 3 to 3 so this is the right option okay now let's see one more also from a to b to seven, the function is given from r minus zero to r given by f of x is equal to one by x minus upon e raised to two x minus one can be made continuous at x is equal to zero by defining f of zero as. Now they say that the function is continuous at x is equal to zero, and we know that if the function is uh, continuous at x is equal to zero, then limit exists at that point. So limit x tends to zero f of x is x exist that means limit x tends to 0 1 minus x minus 1 upon x minus 2 upon e raised to 2 x minus 1 is exist that means let's take lcm so it becomes uh, 1 upon x uh, sorry e raised to 2 x minus 1 minus 2 x this x goes here and uh, in the denominator we have x into e raised to 2 x minus 1 now remember all the basic video of our limits the first we start with the limits here uh, if we put 0 then we have 1 minus 1 that is 0 minus 0 that means 0 in the numerator we have 0 in the denominator we also have 0 so we have here 0 by which form 0 by 0 form so for 0 by 0 form we can apply L hospital rule and what we do that in L hospital rule we just differentiate numerator and denominator respectively 
so let's do that and those students who don't know that please go to the topic lecture okay and that we cover all the formulas of L hospital rule now let's differentiate this so it becomes 2 into e raised to 2 x minus 1's differentiation is 0 and here it is minus 2 and in the denominator we have two functions in the multiply so first considering this as a constant e raised to 2x minus 1 as a constant x differentiation is 1 plus x as a constant and e raised to 2x minus 1's differentiation is 2 into e raised to 2x now again put the limit if i put 0 here then it becomes 2 minus 2 that means 0 and if i put 0 here then it becomes 0 1 minus 1 0 and here 0 so Again, we have 0 by 0 form. In this, also we have 0 by 0 form. So, again differentiate that. That means in the numerator, we have 4 into e raised to 2x minus 2 differentiation 0. Here, 2 into e raised to 2x. Okay. And plus, here, 2 is constant. And here, so again, 2 function is in multiplication. So, e raised to 2x is constant. x differentiation is 1. So, it becomes 4 into e raised to 2x. 2 into e raised to 2x from this. And 2 into e raised to 2x from this. At last, 2x is constant, e raised to 2x differentiation is 2 into e raised to 2x, that means 4x e raised to 2x. Now, if we put li uh, limit here, if we put the limit now, then what we have? In the numerator, we have e raised to 2x, e raised to 0, that is 1, so that at that we have 4. And in the denominator, here if we put 0, then it becomes 0, and here it, it becomes 4, so 4 by 4 is 1. So, very good question, we have to use L hospital theorem two times. So, my right answer option is... 4 that is answer is 1 okay so 4 is my right option answer option number 4 okay let's see one more the solution for x equation root 2 to x dt upon 2 square root of t square minus 1 is equal to pi by 2 then we have to find out the value of x now we all know that the integration of 1 upon t square root of t square minus 1 that is sec inverse x so it becomes sec inverse of t from root 2 to x so, first apply upper limit that means sec inverse x minus lower limit sec inverse of root 2 that is pi by 4. Here they gave the pi by 2. So, pi by 4 goes here pi by 2 plus pi by 4 that means 3 pi by 4. So, x is equal to sec of 3 pi by 4. 3 pi by 4 that means second quadrant and that sec is negative and what is the value? It is root 2. So, we have x is equal to minus root 2. Very easy question. You can solve this question orally also. So, right option is not given in the this of option right option is minus root 2 okay so don't confuse and the last one if a line makes an angle of pi by 4 with the positive direction of each x axis and y axis then the angle that the line makes with the positive direction of z axis now this is the good question we know the all the formulas those who don't know please go to the topic lecture of uh, lines and plane or 3d ge geometry we know that and this is the direction cosines. They gave us value of L, then uh, they gave the value of M. Okay, and they ask to find the value of N. What is the value of N? They ask. Okay, now L is equal to cos alpha. Alpha is given pi by four here, so L is equal to one by root two. M is also uh, cos beta. And beta is also pi by 4. So, m is also 1 by root 2. Now, we all know that l square plus m square plus n square is equal to 1. This all formulas we have learned in topic lectures. See, the formula, remember of the formula is very important thing here. We know that l is equal to cos alpha. So, cos pi by 4. m is equal to cos pi by 4. Cos beta. So, that is cos pi by 4 again. Because the alpha and the beta are the angle which uh, the line makes with the positive x axis and y axis. So, it becomes pi by 4 here so i is l is equal to cos pi by 4 that means 1 by root 2 and uh, we all already know that l square plus n square plus n square is equal to 1 that means 1 by 2 plus here also 1 by 2 plus n square is equal to 1 so this becomes 1 1 by 1 gets cancelled out so n becomes 0 now n becomes 0 and what is n n is equal to cos of gamma cos of sorry for my writing here cos of gamma that means cos gamma is equal to 0 that means gamma is equal to pi by 2 and x z axis may again pi by 2 with the okay uh, positive z axis line makes an angle pi by 2 with positive z axis so right answer option number is 4 4 is my right option pi by 2 so this is all about the AIEEE 2007 we saw a pretty good questions from AIEEE in the last 4 to 5 lectures I am going to solve more problems on that so please keep watching 
and thank you for watching this video and if you like this video don't forget to share it and hit that subscribe